Hello there, this is Pastor Silva Mudley. And I'm Pastor Jesse Mudley. You're watching Your Miracle Moment. Yesterday, we had such a wonderful time on the program. Mm. And thank you for all the responses that we got on social media, the messages. And thank you, you are such a blessing. And thank you to all of those guys who watch our live stream on Sundays and Wednesdays. We love each one of you guys. And if you don't, you can go to our website and find out how to join our live stream. Now, we started speaking yesterday about the year 2021, the year we're in. Mm. It's a year of overflowing restoration. And I spoke about the trauma and the tragedy of 2020 and also 2021. Because this thing does yeah. not seem to be slowing, slowing down. down. Yes. It seems to be accelerating. In the midst of all this, Jesus spoke about two roads. He said there's a broad road which the world takes, but there is a narrow road which is available to us. And he wants you and I to travel down that narrow road. Now, to get to that narrow road and to change the outcome for us as believers, mm. we have to do certain things. Now, the Word of God has to be appropriated. That means all the promises of God have to be appropriated. Mm, it's not automatic. It's not automatic. It's right? saved. Mm. It's like healing. Yes. Healing is not automatic. Because you're a Christian doesn't mean you'll get healed. Mm, that's right. You'll get healed because you appropriate the Word. By the wounds of Jesus, I am healed. You take the Word and you bring it inside you. And because you've appropriated the Word, you manifest healing. That's how healing works. And all the promises of God work the same way. Yes, they do. They have to be appropriated. In the Bible, we read the story about um, Ezekiel. And Ezekiel is taken to a valley with dried bones. Yes. And the angel says to Ezekiel, do you believe that this dried bones can become an army, a great army? Mm. Can they live again? Can mm. they live again? And the angel says, do you believe? So the first part is to have faith. Right. It, it means to do some action. And he says, yeah, I believe. Okay. The angel replies, and I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> Since you believe, now make it happen. Prophesy to the dried bones. Yeah, speak out. Speak it out. So when he prophesies, he activates restoration of a great army. Mm. In 2021, we're going to activate overflowing restoration. And we're following the example of King David in the Bible. King David faced a situation very similar to what the whole world is facing right now. He was in a place of great despair, discontentment, and, and debt. debt. A lot of debt. And he was surrounded by an army, or, or actually family members, yes. who were all messed up, just as messed up as he was. And in an environment like that, you can get depressed, you can feel fearful, you can feel lonely. You can become suicidal. But David did something. In fact, in 1 Samuel 20, they were all depressed. They were all discontented. Mm. They were all discouraged. But in 1 Samuel 30, just 10 chapters later, yes. these were completely different people. They were men of valor. Mm. There was no Mighty. more depression, no more debt, no more yeah, discontentment. discontentment. None of that stuck. Now, what happened? What happened from 1 Samuel 20 to 1 Samuel 30? David activated overflowing restoration. And you and I today, we can activate overflowing restoration. And this is the path that God spoke to me about in late 2020. He said, create a path for my children. Show them how to walk the road that I have prepared for them. They don't need to experience the same thing the world is experiencing. Yes, exactly. You know, when you're a child of God, God separates you. He doesn't take you out of the world, but he separates you from what's going on mm. and he insulates you. Think about the Israelites in Egypt, in yes. the city of Goshen. Goshen, right? yes. They all lived in Goshen. Right next door, across the fence, literally, over the fence <laughs> were the Egyptians. The Egyptians experienced plagues after plagues after plagues. And, and can you explain some of those plagues the Egyptians experienced? Because we're in a time of a great plague, yes. right? But explain some of the plagues that the Egyptians went through. They, they also experienced, um, you know, the river turning into blood. Uh, they couldn't have water to drink. Their houses Boils were... Boils on their 
Yes, on Now, the boils, by the way, just, just to tell you, boils is caused by a virus. Mm. It's caused by a virus. It's caused by a germ, a virus. Yes. Boils is a pandemic. It's a pandemic that mm. hit him. And then you had uh, uh, frogs, yeah. water turning, no more water, turning to blood. You can't drink it. Yeah, you can't bath, you right? can't do it. Hail. Mm, and the Fire and brimstone. Wow. They had, I mean, they had like, how many was it? Ten? Ten. Ten disasters. Ten. And they ten. also had... We're having one and we are struggling to get through the one. <laughs> they had ten disasters. And at the same time, oh, over the fence, literally over the fence, the Israelites were not affected by it. They went through their daily routines. Yes. <laughs> Even when the angel of death came, they followed what the instructions of God. What the word said, and, yes. and the angel of death passed over, killed the firstborn of the Egyptians, but never touched their firstborns. Never touched their firstborns. Mm. Why? Because you can choose a path that is different from the path the world is going through. And this is the power given to us as believers. Yeah. You know, Egypt represented the world's economy, mm -hmm. the way we are now looking at the way the world is suffering. Right. Okay. But Goshen, where the Israel, uh, Israelis lived, represents God's economy. Right. When you appropriate God's word, his, his shadow, right. his presence mm -hmm. literally overshadows us. Mm -hmm. And he takes care of us. And in God's economy, mm -hmm. you cannot be affected by the way the world's economy is happening. So you, when, you, when you trust in God's word, when you appropriate his word, mm -hmm. when you speak his word, you activate the presence of God over your life, Amen. over your family, yeah. over everything you own. Right. And then you begin to experience God's presence as a mighty shadow mm -hmm. covering you. Just like he says in the book of Psalms. And you know, wow. I am so blessed to read the Word of God and to learn mm -hmm. from somebody that already went through yes. so much of trouble, uh, yeah. and so he, much and pain he, and he, sorrow. He, he just went from trouble to trouble to trouble to trouble. You know, and when you go through something like that, you want people to come into your home yeah. to encourage you, yeah. to build you up, to take so, you so out of depression. So here he is, he's in a cave, right? Yeah. He's in a huge cave. It's massive mm. because, and here in South Africa, we have several big caves. <laughs> yes, right? we do. Several big caves. So he, he was in one of these big, huge caves where his relatives, and mm. he had a lot of relatives. <laughs> he had 400 of them. They were all of them sure. were angry, discontented, and in great debt. debt. <laughs> Right. They were angry with the government. Mm. They were angry with the lockdown regulations from Saul. Mm. You know, uh, they were discontented. Complaining, they were they were in distress. The they didn't know. It's like how people feel right now. They don't know if they're going to get infected or not. Mm. They don't know if their COVID results are coming back positive or negative. They're in great distress. These people were in great distress, yes, in were. debt, discontented. And all these people, negative people, mm. came to the cave to live with David. Mm. Imagine 400, 400 people who are depressed and you are now going to shepherd them. Simply <laughs> How many people would love to go to that church? <laughs> amen, 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 amen. So David himself, I mean, he had a bad deal, a raw deal. Mm. He killed Goliath. He was promised the girl, promised the money, promised the tax deduction. And he got it for a time being, but his father-in-law got jealous of him and tried to murder him. So mm -hmm. David had to leave the girl behind, leave the money behind, mm -hmm. leave everything behind, and, and hide in a cave with losing. I mean, he, he got a raw deal. Yeah. He killed Goliath. And instead of being honored, he was betrayed. <laughs> he was betrayed. And so he's depressed. He's also distressed in debt. He's in debt because mm -hmm. he left all the money behind. He's in debt, he's in distress, and he's also discontented. Yes. But, and hold on, hold on, before I get to the but, these 400 men come and join him. <laughs> so he could have decided, hey, I'm just going to weep with everyone. I'm going to join the world and cry and be fearful and hide from this thing. 
I'm just going to lock myself behind these doors. I'm going to hide in the cave and hope something happens. This passes by. Mm. I hope it passes over. I hope it's gone. It's over. We don't know when this pandemic is going to end. None yes. of us knows when it's going to end. People say it might end in 2022. We don't know. But some people say it might end mm. even in 2021. We don't know. But we can't live in the cave and let the world pass by, let everything pass by. Yeah. God wants us in this time to experience total overflowing restoration. Mm. Why overflowing? Because God doesn't want you to just get back what you lost. Mm. He wants you to get it back with interest, with interest. So to get total restoration, you have to activate it. You have to act. It's not automatic. It's, even if somebody can prophesize, you're going to get total restoration. It's mm. not automatic. It has to be activated in order to manifest. So in this series, I'm teaching you how to activate total overflowing restoration. Amen. So we see that David firstly had a different mindset. When he wrote Psalms 1, he said, Blessed is the man that does not connect Mm. That does not connect to the, to the sinners, to the ungodly, the scornful, doesn't connect to the mockers, doesn't connect to the people who are always negative. Mm. Blessed is a man who disconnects from them. Just by disconnecting, you're blessed. But hold on. You disconnect and at the same time, you reconnect. So you have to disconnect from the negativity and you have to connect to the word of God, spending time in God's word, spending time in fellowship. He says, his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. So day and night, he's studying the Bible, he's reading the word, he's confessing the word, he's believing the word. So he disconnected from all the bad news. He disconnected from all the, the, the theories and the bad and negative stuff that even comes out of social media, out of the news channels. He disconnected from all the negativity and he connected to the word of God. When he did that, the Bible says he became like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. That means it was not just one source, but he became a person at the center of multiple sources. Yes. Multiple. Secondly, yes. he brought forth his fruit in season. Mm. Thirdly, his leaf did not wither. What does it mean? It means the seasons around him had no effect on him. His leaf stayed green in summer, winter, autumn, and spring. Amen. The seasons had no effect. And so his leaf stayed green. It did not wither. Mm. And now I know a lot of people say, I'm going through this season, I'm going through that season. Here was someone where the seasons had no effect on him. Mm. And whatever he does shall prosper. That means whatever David did now prospers. And why? Why does this happen? Because you make a choice, number one, to disconnect from the broad road and to connect to God, connect to the word. Now, David did that. And through the process of restoration, he was able to transform an army of 400 men who were depressed, distressed, in debt, transform them into an army of mighty men of valor. Yes, he did. Mighty men of valor, right? So there, there is a path in the Bible, and, and the Bible talks about this process over and over, how you can change the outcome, how you can take another path, how you can create a roadway in the wilderness through God's word. Now, we know it's God doing it, mm. but the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent lay hold of it. They lay hold of it. And right now, I'm watching as many in the body of Christ are not laying hold of the kingdom. They're not taking the kingdom by force. Instead, they are waiting for it to pass over. Maybe things will change. Well, what if it doesn't change? What if things just get uh, worse than what they are? We don't know. I don't want to sound like a prophet of doom, but I'm not going to wait for the world to decide my destiny. My destiny is determined by God and his word. Yes, that's so right. distress, discontentment was gone. And, and we see God speak about this. God's desire for everyone, including David, yes. is total recovery. Everything that was taken from you, everything that you lost, to come back with interest. And God speaks about it in Joel chapter 2. Yes, Remember, yes. Joel chapter 2 is a message for the church. That's why on the day of Pentecost, 
Peter quoted Joel chapter 2 because it's a message for us, the church, in this time. It's a church message. What does God say, Jesse? Read that for me again. Joel chapter 2, verses 23 to 26. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, Uh and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Now, watch this. Watch this. The one rain prepares the ground for sowing. The other rain prepares the ground for harvest. Okay. So one is heavy, breaks the seed, and, and brings forth the harvest. Mm. The one prepares the ground to sow Makes the seed. The other one is for the harvest. Now, we all understand that in a certain month, the, mm-hmm. the ground is ready, you prepare the ground, and you sow your seed. Then you wait for many, 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 many months. Yes. And then it comes harvest time. Right. Right? So harvest is, it's, there is a period in between sowing mm. and harvesting. We right. all understand that, right? However, there is also another time. There is a time where God does what we know call restoration. And in the month of sowing, there is also reaping. This is what happens here. It says mm. the, the former rain and the latter rain will come in the first month. Yes. <laughs> first month. This is very powerful. Right, which means that you, the seed goes down and before you blink your eyes, the harvest comes. <laughs> That's how restoration works. Now, there is several times in the Bible examples of this. But I'll give you one example that many of you have read. It's a story of Isaac. Remember Isaac went uh, to a Philistine town? Yes, he did. And that town was in deep recession. That means all the businesses were closing down. It was a, there was a drought in the land. So all the farms were, were, going, for, uh, uh, were, were going up for mortgage. People were losing their businesses, losing their homes. The soil was hard. Anything you planted just died. So no one was prospering. Even the king suffered loss as well. Mm. And here goes Isaac. Right? He buys property because he gets it probably cheap anyway. Right? He buys property yeah. <laughs> and he sows in the soil that scientist, that the world's experts that the news media says is impossible to plant in. They say you are mad. Like the world will say to you when you start to follow God's path. Yeah. They say you are mad, you are crazy. I mean, what is this thing, you people? They might laugh at you and mock you. And I'm sure the first times they mocked Isaac. They said, are you crazy? Yeah. We've had the greatest <laughs> scientist come here. We've had the greatest scientists that study soil in the top universities in the world. They came, they did an analysis of the mm. soil. They did an analysis of the water content. And they said to us, nothing will grow here. It will die. Yeah. This, this is why everyone is selling up and moving. Now, Isaac buys it there. He plants his seed. Mm. But you have to read the scripture in context. Isaac reaps the harvest. However... When you read the scripture, he does not reap a harvest once a year. Let me say it again. He does not reap a harvest once a year. In fact, from the scripture, Mm -hmm. it seems that Isaac reaps a harvest every month. Every month. That's why the Bible talks about him getting a massive return. Yeah, it's like multiple harvests. A multiple harvest. The only way to get such a high return is to get your harvest in every month. Oh, oh I know that, that, that just messes you up right now. He became so wealthy overnight, getting a return every month, getting a harvest every month, that he became more powerful than the king. The <laughs> king was terrified of him and said, please, I'm begging you, please, yeah. can you go? You no are too, way. <laughs> you're too powerful. You are too powerful. How, how is it the scientists can't understand every month you're getting a harvest? Every month? For you to get this kind of return? You, every month you're getting a harvest? The scripture says <laughs> that this is how restoration works. In the same month, the latter and the former end will come together. Mm. Amen. 
This is what restoration is all about. This is acceleration. As it's well. acceleration of restoration. Yeah. Amen. Now, go on reading for me, Jesse. And the floors shall be full of wheat. Uh huh. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. So they'll overflow. Yeah. Right? So and the floor is the full vats. of wheat. Okay, it's full of wheat, mm. and the vats are overflowing. So you can't walk right. there. <laughs> now, what does God say? And the, I will restore to you the years. Now, hold on. That's I'll restore key. to you the years. Now, watch that. Watch that word. He doesn't say, I'll restore to you the last 12 months you've lost. He doesn't say, I'll restore to you the last three months you've lost. Mm. He says, I'll restore to you the? Years. That the locust that is the eaten, locust the canker eaten. worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. When we study demonology, we'll find that these are four types of demon spirits that attack you differently, uh, that devour mm. your blessing, devour your income. So they attack differently, and you, you will be able to identify which type of demon mm. is attacking you by the financial loss you experience. Some of them bring a slow loss. Some of them bring a, a, a loss that is gradual. Yeah. Some of them choke you. Each one of them attacks differently. All and and if you want to know more about that, you can get my, my CD series on that where I talk about the, the different kinds of uh, uh, locust, cankerworm, caterpillar, and palmer experience. worm, yes. what each one of them means and how these demons attack you. The good news is you can stop all four demons by doing one thing. You can bind all four demons by doing one thing. You know what that is? <laughs> yeah, you got it. Malachi. Chapter 3. Verse. Verse 10. Yes, you got it. And I, when you bring all the tide to the storehouse, I will bind the devourer. So all four of these devourer spirits are bound only by one thing, by tidy. <laughs> only by tidy. Nowhere else. Nowhere else does God say, or God promised that to bind the devourers. The only way a devourer is bound is mm -hmm. by tithing. I mean, if there's another scripture, I'd love for you to show me where it says the, the devourer is bound by some other way. Okay, Because these are devouring spirits. Yes. Right? And God himself goes after them and stops them from touching your stuff when you tithe. Now, let's go on. Let's go on. I'll restore to you the years. Mm. That means if the devil has been stealing from you for the last 30 years, God's going to restore 30 years of loss. Mm. Oh, some, somebody. <laughs> if you have been sick for the last six years, God's going to restore six years of your life. If you have experienced trauma yes. for the last 40 years of your life, there's 40 years of blessing coming. Listen to me. He says, I'll restore to you the years. That means make a, make a calculation. Mm. Make a calculation. And that's the restoration that I'm giving to you. So if you said, Pastor, we've been struggling and struggling and struggling for the past five years. Five years of restoration is coming. So he says, listen, I'll restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm has eaten, the caterpillar has eaten, and the palm worm. And as I said to you, these are four kinds of devouring spirits that attack you differently in different parts of your life. He says, and then he says, you shall eat in plenty. You shall eat in plenty. You will have so much to eat, man. Oh, <laughs> you'll have to consider going on a keto diet because <laughs> you're going to be eating plenty and you'll be satisfied. satisfied. And look, you'll praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. You'll so never be ashamed. no amount of years, God's not putting a number on it. He says, any amount of years that you were suffering lack yeah. and where the enemy stole from you. Yeah. So God is going to restore you. Overflow, overflow. restoration. That's what he's saying, yeah? Yeah. And he's saying, as you said, that you will lack no good thing. Nothing at all. <laughs> right. Now, now, listen to this. The whole Bible is a book of overflowing restoration. In fact, there are different sets of rules for the world and a child of God. Again, I spoke to you about two roads. I spoke to you about the broad road and the narrow road. So the world system says that everything born must die. Right? We, you know, that's what the world says. Yes. Anything that's born is going to have a time, it's going to die. Mm. God says that anything that dies will live. Wow. Mm. 
Mm. The world says everything starts out new and gets old. I mean, you go and get a car, it's brand new. Six years later, it starts to fall apart. And 10 years later, it gets older and older and older. That's what the world says. Anything starts out new, but it then gets old. God says the old can become new. You know, in Psalm 103, right. God's word says that he satisfies our mouth with good things. Amen. So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Wow, powerful. <laughs> the world says everything strong becomes weak, right? Everything, you know, one, now you might be going to the gym, you may, may have put on some muscles, mm. but later on you're going to get weak, you're going to get old and weak. <laughs> God says everything weak will become strong. Amen. In fact, scientists agree that the universe yeah. is expanding all the time. Yeah. There's more new than old. Yes. The universe is still <laughs> growing. So we serve a God that makes all things new, beloved. All things yeah. new. The world goes from light to dark, but from darkness, God says, I will make light. Oh, that's Woo! The world goes from liberty to bondage, but God says we go from bondage to liberty. Mm. When you come under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you are under the influence of the law of new life. The old man is put off and the new man is put on, yes. right? The world says full becomes empty, right? You have a full tank of gas, eventually you'll get empty. But mm. God says empty becomes full. When you come to God, you are empty. Did you know that? You're empty when you come to God and He fills you up. He fills you with the Holy Spirit. And if, and if someone goes to the devil full, the devil pours them out, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he will empty them out. But when you go to God, he fills he you up. Fills he fills you, you with his spirit. <laughs> God is a God of restoration. And the kingdom of God is a kingdom that restores everything missing and everything broken. Remember the word shalom. Yes. When Hebrews, when Jewish people greet, themselves, greet each other, they say shalom. And what they're really saying is, is everything okay with you? Yeah. Is there anything missing in you? Is there anything broken in you? Right? Because the God I serve is a God of restoration who can fix it. Yes, Amen. It <laughs> so in order to achieve this, we must understand the process. Too many Christians spend their time thinking about the past and they're waiting to go to heaven. A lot of people can get to heaven and they're going to be disappointed mm. because they miss some of the best times of their life here on earth waiting to go to heaven. Amen. So God doesn't want you to get to heaven and regret mm. why you missed living for him on the earth. Why you missed, why you missed gathering on the earth. Yes. Why you missed doing business on the earth. So I'm going to expand over the next several weeks and, uh, well, actually over the next two weeks on this program. Mm. The process is required for overflowing restoration. And you're going to regain everything that you lost and more. Everything that you lost and more. So from tomorrow, uh, on tomorrow's episode, we're going to go through the various things that cause the turnaround, the manifestation of overflowing blessing. And I'm looking forward, we are looking forward to hearing your testimonies of how God is giving you total overflowing Amen. restoration. This is Pastor Silver Mudley. And this is Pastor Jesse Mudley. Reminding you that miracles are normal. God, God bless, bless you. Bye-bye.